afternoon, everyone. Um, I was live at noon, but unfortunately I was filmed sideways, so I thought I would uh, give it another shot. So anyway, uh, welcome everyone. Um, if, if you watched it before at noon, feel free to join in again. Uh, but uh, welcome everyone, whoever may be watching. Uh, as we today begin the season of Lent with the uh, celebration of Ash Wednesday. Uh, Ash Wednesday is a tradition which goes back to the 8th century in the Christianity as the beginning of the 40 days of preparation for Jesus' suffering and death. But uh, we're glad all of you are here with us in whatever, whenever or wherever you may be watching. We're glad to have you here. And in case you don't know me, I'm Pastor Chuck Thompson, um, and I serve the Congregation of Trinity Lutheran Church in New London. And welcome. I will be using the uh, Ash Wednesday service we'll be using tonight. Um, and I'll share that with you as we have this time together. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent. Self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. We will now join in the confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage, amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you. And all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. At this point in this service, we will be um, having the imposition of ashes. Again, ashes um, have been a symbol of repentance going back to Old Testament times. When people would repent, they would put on sackcloth and ashes. Uh, but ashes also were used as a cleansing agent. And so with the ashes, there's also some baptismal images. Uh, imagery here. As we were cleansed in baptism, uh, we put on ashes to remind us of how in, in our baptisms Christ has cleansed us. And we begin the season of Lent remembering that we have a God always willing to cleanse. If you want to at home repeat after me, please feel free. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy in his resurrection. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ came to earth and died for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the second chapter of the book of Joel. Because of the coming day of the Lord, the prophet Joel calls the people to a community lament. The repentant community reminds God of his gracious character and asks God to spare the people, lest the nations doubt God's power to save. So Joel writes, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will award you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither must moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So this Ash Wednesday, we at Trinity Lutheran are beginning a Lenten series entitled, Whose Cross Is It Anyway? It's a series of six skits. And the premise of the series is a delivery man trying to deliver a cross to people. The 
man is, uh, he looks like a, a UPS delivery man, but uh, he is from the Jerusalem Parcel Service, and uh, he's trying to deliver this cross to, to various people. But what he finds is that uh, when he visits all these different people and tries to deliver the cross, nobody wants it. Nobody takes it. And they all have their reasons why. Well, I don't really, I don't really need it. It's too expensive. It doesn't fit the decor of our house. It's not very pretty. I never ordered it. But basically what's behind all the rejection of the cross is I don't need it. This, unfortunately, is the root of all sin. The idea that we don't need God. Martin Luther described sin as us trying to be God. And so this Lenten season, this Lenten journey is an opportunity for us to look at ourselves and actually recognize our need for God. For we know that when we think we are God, or we, don't, or we think we don't need God, that's when we often get ourselves into trouble. This passage from the book of Joel is quite appropriate for this occasion, so that's why I chose to... Uh, to focus on this one. For this passage from Joel is about turning to God, acknowledging our need for God, and, we, and coming to God with the assurance that we can come to God because he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. For Joel was written at a time that the Israelites were quite disobedient. They had forgotten about God. They thought they were doing just fine on their own. They worshiped other gods, the rich oppressed the poor, but fundamentally the people thought they could get just, they can get by just fine on their own. They didn't need to turn to a God. And so God in this passage from Joel is like a loving parent calling their child back. And these passages are some of my favorites in scripture, especially Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, who relents from punishing. In these beautiful words from Joel, we are all reminded that while God knows us inside and out, God knows all our sin. God knows all of our dirt, but he loves us anyway. And this is a God who continuously comes to us, inviting us to come back to him to turn to him, to know him better. We have a God who wants an intimate relationship with us, a God who keeps offering us the cross, who keeps offering us forgiveness and renewal. So this Lenten season is an opportunity for us to look at ourselves, acknowledge our shortcomings, acknowledge our need for God, and receive his grace and mercy. Lent is not about beating ourselves up. That's one misconception people have. That somehow we're supposed to just dwell in our sins and, and, and beat ourselves up over them. But rather, it's the opposite. It's about turning to God and receiving grace and mercy. And Lord knows we, we fall short every day. Lord knows every single day we sin. Every single day we do what we shouldn't do or don't do what we should do. We all fall short. We all fall flat on our faces at times. But yet passages, passages such as these from Joel remind us that we have a loving God, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in, and abounding in steadfast love, a God who keeps inviting us to come back again and again. When we continue to fall away, God says, keep coming back. So that's ultimately the message of Lent. We have a loving God who when Jesus died on the cross, he died for sins once and for all. Jesus has taken care of all sins. Jesus has taken care of all the things that separate us from God. The message of Lent is that we are invited by God to turn to him over and over again to receive his love, his grace, his mercy. For his love is never, un never ending. God says the cross is here for you. 
the cross of love and forgiveness and mercy. Take it into your lives. I want to heal you. I want to forgive you. And when we receive the cross, when we receive the mercy and the love, the grace of God, you can't help but share it. So let's keep coming back, wherever you may be. Keep turning to God. Receive his forgiveness. And share it with others. Amen. Now let us have some uh, prayer time together. I'm going to uplift the uh, prayer concerns we have at Trinity, but uh, if any of you are watching, please feel free to share it wherever you may be. Share whatever concerns you may have. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we thank you for the cross. Help us to remember that the cross is a gift to us. Your son gave his life on the cross so that we may receive your grace, your mercy. Help us to know, Lord, that every time we fall, every time we turn to you, you are there to forgive us, to receive us. Help us to keep coming back and turning to you. And Lord, we lift up before you all those in need of healing in mind, body, or spirit, especially Carol, Larry, the Afghan refugees, the Ukrainian people, Tammy, Leslie, Trista, Joe, Bonnie, Tina, Cindy, Kathy, Helen, Jackie, Dawn, Gerald, Ginger, Anna, Sam, and all others we name. And Lord, we lift up before you all public servants. We lift up especially those in the military, Shane and Zachary and we lift up all who are fighting in the wars, especially the war in the Ukraine right now. Lord, we do pray for peace and justice. We pray for our schools. We pray for all those who are on the front lines, all medical personnel fighting COVID-19. We pray for all those who are grieving. We pray that you'll keep them in your hands, O Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Wherever and whenever you may be watching this, we hope this uh, abbreviated Ash Wednesday service has been a blessing to you. And we pray that this season of Lent will be a blessing to all of you. And throughout this season, we can be reminded again to turn to the God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. May this God fill, fill you with peace so that you can share this peace and love with others. We conclude with the blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God. May God bless you all, and uh, I will be back at Facebook Live, hopefully at noon next week. And um, also during Lent, uh, we will be continuing to have in-person worship at 6.30 as we'll continue the series. So I will be the next five Wednesdays doing a Facebook Live at noon, and then uh, worship will be at 6.30 with the skits. Let us now go in peace. God bless you.